Greetings friends and fellow cigar box guitar enthusiasts. Dale Puckett here and in this video I'm going to show you 10 tips and tricks to help you build better cigar box guitars. All right, this first tip is just common sense. We are going to glue this fretboard onto this neck. All right, first things first, I'm going to secure in my vice grip so I can be hands free. And then I put the uh, fretboard, make sure it's, the frets are on the right side, on the neck and with a pencil, mark it over here so I know exactly where to glue. And then I'm gonna be generous with the glue and smear it all around. All right, so I have glue over the entire top length of the neck and I also have glue over the entire surface of the fretboard, the backside, and I let it get a little tacky. Put it in place, press it together. Okay, so we're gonna squeeze this thing together. Now, if you're gonna use these kind of clamps, I recommend getting some sacrificial pieces and putting those over your fretboard so that when you do tighten them down, any kind of indentation from these clamps is going to go into the sacrificial piece of the wood and not into your fretboard. Of course, you could always use these guys here, which don't have quite as much um, pressure. And you can use those. But again, I always recommend going into the sacrificial piece just in case you don't, you don't want to get any unnecessary indentations from your clamps into your fretboard. All right, the next tip I want to talk about is adding these springs for the internal reverb. So what I do is I get these little hooks and you can get big hooks, little hooks, doesn't matter. And then I place them on the inside here, probably about eight inches apart or so, just a ballpark, doesn't, there's no exact science. And um, you, can, you can experiment with different size springs, right? I've got all sorts, I got fat springs, skinny springs, long springs, short springs. Um, and then just kind of stretch them out. And what I do is I put it up to my ear, kind of give it a little bang and you can hear the different tones there. And I just get my springs anywhere and everywhere. I get them at the big box stores, get them online, get them at garage sales, scavenge them here and there, wherever. All right, this next tip is adding gloss enamel to your neck and fretboard. And this gives it that shiny, professional. And obviously protects it. You can do as many coats as you like, but just one thin coat is pretty good. All right, the next tip I want to talk about is incorporating the back angle into your cigar box guitar builds. And what I mean by the back angle is this angle here. It's thicker here, and it gets thinner, 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 thinner as it approaches the fretboard here. What that does is it gives you more action with your right hand here. And how I achieve that is while I'm building the neck, I cut it at an angle down here. So this is about a quarter of an inch thinner here than it is here. In this case here, this is an inch and three eighths. This is an inch and one eighth. And it creates that subtle back angle. There will be more information in the video links in the description below. All right, this next tip is concerning the zero jumbo fret. All right, so normally I just use medium, medium, nickel frets, but for the zero fret, I go with the extra large jumbo fret. And then I just get my little triangle file and I measure out the gap that I want and I just give it just a little score and that holds it in place so that when you bend that, that the strings don't flop around, it holds them in place. And what that does is it gives me the um, same action 
on each guitar that I build. No fret buzz and just the perfect action down here at these frets. All right, speaking about frets, nothing is more aggravating than when these frets pop out. They call it fret spike. And so you've seen me use the angle grinder to grind down these. You can also get these fancy fret edge files and take them off that way. Or you could just get your own file and just, you know, take them off that way. But check out this awesome little tip. All right, if you got access to one of these bad boys, check this out. All right, wish me luck. Perfecto. All right, this next tip, we are going to embed our piezo in hot glue. So what you do is you measure out where your saddle's gonna go. And then, using a Fosner bit that is larger than the diameter of your piezo, you're going to gouge out a hole right where your saddle's gonna go. And I go about, about an eighth of an inch deep. And then, hot glue. I put a nice little dollop there. About the size of a nickel. And then I take the piezo, the uh, flat side, down and just push it in. You gotta be careful because this is hot and uncomfortable if you keep touch it, but you want to you know have it nice and firm in there. And then more hot glue on the top. And you're gonna have to just kind of guess how much is just enough. And then what I do is I get like a business card and we get just a little bit more. Cause you can always trim off the excess and you want this to be thoroughly Im embedded. And then I just put the business card right on the top. In fact, just a tiny bit more. And then I have a spare cigar box guitar top and I just put it on there and smash it down and hold it in place and then let it dry. Voila! All right, here's a tip. Let's say you have limited real estate up here on your headstock and you want to get your tuners closer together. This is what you can do. Just get your tuners and then mark it where the holes are and we're just going to cut those off. All right, after grinding it on the grinding wheel, it looks like that. And then you just drill your, your new hole and then it looks like that. So now you have a smaller tuning peg and you get more in a smaller space. All right, here's a good tip. Whenever you're working with up close stuff, get yourself some of these reading glasses. Seriously, don't be ashamed of these things, man. You can see awesome detail up close whenever you're doing stuff. So these little fretting files, you can get these files anywhere at a Harbor Freight or hobby stores or anywhere where they sell files. And what I do is I get these flat ones and then I grind smooth the top and the bottom of them so that they're smooth there. So they only have teeth on the big flat side, right? So then what you do is 
you put the smooth side that doesn't scar anything on the wood and you curve and pull the teeth over. And you can do the same thing on this side. And so you get those real nice uh, fret ends and you don't harm the wood. And finally, the last tip has to do with setting up the position markers on a fretless slider. So the very first thing you're going to do is you're going to put the saddle where you want it to be, according to the scale length of your fretboard. And then you're going to kind of tilt it just a little bit here so that uh, it looks like normal. And then you're going to tune to wherever you want it to be. And this one here is tuned EBE. You want to just make sure it's in perfect tune. Then you're going to identify where the harmonic is. And then using your slide, you're going to want to make sure that your chord is straight up and down, that it's not at an angle, right? And you got to use your ear. Okay, so you're going to play. And again, you're going to play around with it by tilting it and you're going to listen. You want to make sure that it's in perfect tune when it's straight up and down as compared to open. And if it's not, you might have to adjust this thing slightly Okay, to get it to be at the proper angle so that this chord is perfect when it's straight up and down. That's the first thing you're going to do. Now what you do is you get a pencil and you find the notes using your ear. And mark it with the pencil. Find the next note. Mark it again. Find the next note. Mark it. Now when I'm marking it, I'm marking at the un, at the cur the bottom curve of the slide. Okay? So that I know that the bottom part of the slide hits that mark. Same for the last note. Then of course the octave. So once I got all the marks, I'm gonna go back and verify. All right, once I verify and confirm that all of these marks are in the right spot, I'm gonna get these tiny little screws and then permanently position them. Okay, now all of those permanent markers are now in place. Alright, I hope you enjoyed that tips video. If you did, be sure to subscribe, comment, like, share. And then I will leave you with this one last tip. Whenever you're done building your cigar box guitar or other box guitar, be sure to identify it somehow, either by a serial number or a signature or a business card or a logo or something, something or other. You need to identify your work. All right, till next time.